हरे कृष्णा हरि बोल हरे कृष्णा टू एवरीबॉडी ओ ग्लोरियस टू शुरा प्रभात हरे कृष्णा टू डेविड जेम्स एंड्रे टायोन माय ओल्ड बडीज फ्रॉम कनाडा हरे कृष्णा प्रभुस दे ऑलवेज ग्रीट मी um when there's a premiere of the podcast they greet me on the chat so sometimes i'm able to um chat with them a little bit these are good boys from canada how are you prabhus how are you doing please drop me a message in the comment section also uh if you can that will be very much appreciated because then i can get back to it and respond later hari krishna to uh makanchu prabhu from iceland listening from iceland Hare Krishna to Paramahamsa Prabhu in Slovakia. Hare Krishna to our Maitreya Rishi Prabhu, who is preaching in London. Hare Krishna to Sabina Mataji in Slovenia. Um, our listeners are all over the place. Um, where are you listening from? Uh, you, the person I'm talking to. You now. You, you exactly. You. I mean you. Please. um uh, let us know in the comments where do you catching this bliss vibration in pakistan bangladesh burma china i'm curious to know i'm always wondering who are these people who are listening to our bliss podcast we um in average we have a hundred viewers sometimes less sometimes more and um that number is constant so it seems that um these people are um i mean you <laughs> these people what am i saying you people you are listening um regularly so this is very encouraging and um of course it's a little uncomfortable for me because i don't know who you are it's like being observed by the secret police walking down the street and being observed by the by the agents of FBI so you're all FBI agents some of the FBI agents are very bold and they make a contact they say hari bol or hari krishna uh most of them remain anonymous they just look from the distance safe distance so they don't catch the krishna disease <laughs> so that's what we're distributing here krishna disease you can catch it simply by listening krishna disease um we're following our spiritual master his divine grace ac bhaktivedanta swami prabhupat jai who has kindly come to the western world to distribute the original teachings of the vedas and present krishna consciousness i was just um reading a an interview with shila prabhupat and the interviewer is asking what is the origin of krishna consciousness she wanted to know how it started so prabhupada says actually you cannot trace down any history of origin of this movement because krishna consciousness is eternal just like the spirit soul is eternal it is never born the soul is never created is eternal so similarly krishna consciousness is the natural eternal consciousness of the soul right now our consciousness is um absorbed in that which is temporary my school my work my this my that corona virus right my trip prabhu his favorite topic <laughs> um so our krishna consciousness is different from this is it it, it is eternal it is always there we're taking it from one life to an to another <coughs> and if we take it seriously if we take seriously this practice of krishna consciousness then we can fully revive this original uh very very nice and blissful consciousness krishna consciousness think of krishna nothing but krishna become conscious of krishna um 24 hours a day not just an empty ritual in a church or temple or a mosque for one minutes 
or one or two minutes and then go on sinning but make Krishna the um, uh, goal of your life or the center of your life when we speak of Krishna we speak of God the supreme personality of God Godhead God is also eternal just like we are eternal our Krishna consciousness is eternal similarly Krishna is eternal his body is full of bliss knowledge and it is eternal Nava Yovanam in Sri Brahma Samhita Lord Brahma describes Krishna as Nava Yovanam ever youthful ever fresh ever green that is Krishna in the form of a 16 year old boy ever present in the spiritual world from him everything is emanating um, still he is ever fresh ever young his body never deteriorates nothing in him deteriorates he is the source of all pleasure and of everything so this is our Krishna consciousness. This is a very important point that we don't misunderstand this Krishna consciousness. There'll be some kind of a sectarian movement developed at a certain point that, you know, someone might say, oh, your Prabhupada made this up, you know, in the 60s. Or No, no, no. This is not. This is not the true understanding. Even if you go and challenge the authenticity of the Vedas, um, on our website, we have a book called The Proof of the Vedas. I have compiled uh, from the uh, writings of Srila Prabhupada and uh, also give some some of my own realizations on this topic um, it is not a question of um, now scientifically proving oh this Veda was written in such and such year and according to this um, evidence the bone such and such bone bones if you want to find bones and you will not be very successful because in the Vedic culture the body is burnt so your bone method will uh, crush there, will fail. Um, it is a question of common sense. There is eternity. How do we know there is eternity? Why? How do we know that we are eternal? Well, because we can see that certain things are temporary. Just like my body, I see, oh, it only lasts for a little while. So I can understand that that is temporary because there is eternity. Without eternity, there is no meaning to eternity, uh, to the temporary, sorry. You see, so there must be eternal consciousness. There must be eternal relationship with God. And such relationship and teaching cannot be subjected to time. You see, so of course we can argue whether it's Krishna consciousness or the Vedic scripture or not. That we can argue, but this premise must be firmly established. Otherwise, what are we actually um, searching for? Like coming back to that interviewer, you can analyze sometimes the questions people are asking. You can learn a lot. Just the fact that she's asking, what is the origin of your movement, is sort of saying that, okay, who made this up? See, there's already a bias involved. Who who made this thing up? Who was that guy who one day uh, thought, oh, okay, let me make a new religion. I'm going to, you know, make something up and uh, strongly believe in it and convince some other fools and rascals to believe in it as well. See, so even that question is so much surcharged with the atheistic belief because that's what it is atheism is a belief it is not uh, skepticism or scientific or logical it's just a belief that things are going on by accident everything is by accident things are growing by accident there's an order in perfect order whatever system whatever science whatever um, technology we have is simply an imitation of the universal technology, the natural technology of Krishna. How people have made up all these 
technological things, machines and systems and governments, and because they see it is going on in nature, the law, the laws of nature. So they imitate. Oh, we can make our own system. There's a flying mosquito. Uh, so let me make an airplane, mechanical mosquito, uh, gigantic mosquito, and I enter into that mosquito and crush the plane into the twin towers or something like this. Right? That is the difference between the creation of a conditioned soul and the creation of Krishna. Creation of Krishna is perfect. And when we try to imitate Krishna, then we simply create chaos. And then someone like Srila Prabhupada, a great Acharya, Shaktivash avatar, comes and he uses that airplane. He's like, oh, you damn rascal no, fool number one. Okay, let me utilize this creation to spread Krishna consciousness. See how nice Prabhupada is, Krishna is also. This is the arrangement of Krishna. That even you make such a nonsense out of this whole material world, you create so many unnecessary things. Still, Krishna is so clever and his devotee is so clever that they can still help you by using these things in Krishna's service. So in the same way we're using now the microphone, the internet, the Facebook, the YouTube, the center to talk about Krishna, the source of everything, the Supreme Personality of Godhead. And we're chanting His holy name. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. This is Yuga Dharma. This is what we're supposed to do now. Meditation doesn't work. Yoga doesn't work. Forget it. What are you going to now meditate on some void in some yoga studio with 17 other nonsense rascals <laughs> cheating themselves that they have transcended the dualities of material existence? Now, your mind will flood you with sensual uh, thoughts. But if you strongly chant Hare Krishna on the street, at home, whatever, on Facebook, or in the comments on this video, please type Hare Krishna. If you are bored, uh, this is also beneficial. It's writing or chanting doesn't matter. Because people will see it. Someone will see the comment, Hare Krishna. And he will, he will read, what is this nonsense? Hare Krishna. And he is immediately um, purified. So, anyway, I'm taking too much time for the introduction. Today, we're going to continue with our basics of Krishna consciousness. What is the beginning? Yeah. Sometimes we all have to come and ask, what is actually the basis of this movement? Don't think that, oh, I don't need to hear about these beginning and these basics. And uh, I know this. Let me go and read about the Rasa Lila, some higher topics, higher knowledge. Actually, the more you advance, the more you understand the importance of these basic concepts. You are not this body. Uh, do you realize that you are not this body? Can you honestly say, oh, I don't, I don't think I'm the body. Uh, you can say theoretically, but when a thief comes or a murderer comes, then you're going to pull your pants. Because we think, I am this body. We've been associating with the body. We've been enjoying the senses so much. The tongue is asking, let me get, I want a cigarette. The tongue is pushing. Cigarette, come on, give me cigarette. Give me joint, give me ganja. And I have to follow like a fool. Actually, if I'm being controlled by my tongue, then I'm a fool. I'm a slave. People are laughing. Oh, these devotees, they're blindly following some dogmas. Yes, we're blindly following dogmas because we want. But nobody wants a cancer. Nobody wants to die, right? Have a nice, beautiful tumor under your neck. One kilo tumor. Huh? Nobody wants that. But people are forced to smoke. Even there's a picture on the package. This is what you're going to have if you go on smoking. That's all right. The tongue says, I must follow. See, I have made the tongue my God, my spiritual master. And so it is with the other senses. 
So, the beginning of Krishna consciousness, we must understand that um, this is not so easy uh, to think of Krishna. Unless we control our senses, it is practically impossible. We can say so many things, but we must control our senses. So, <coughs> last few podcasts we were discussing, um, first of all, we're, uh, we were discussing about the, uh, the motivation, what should be the motivation when we're taking up Krishna consciousness, before we start practicing Krishna consciousness, what we should understand. So, I have m- elaborated quite a bit on this point that Krishna consciousness is we should not have any motivation. It's not to fulfill an, our material desires. Just like Prabhupada, is, you know, he says that don't make the spiritual master your order supplier. That, oh, Guruji, can you cure my disease? Go to a doctor. Why are you coming to Guru? There's a doctor, there's an ambulance. Go there. Cure your disease. When you approach a spiritual master, you're curing the uh, original disease, Bhavaroga, material existence. So, we talked about that. It's on the podcast called Don't Pray to Krishna. If you want to uh, have a listen, if you have not heard that one, I highly recommend. It's important because, you know, the devotees, they get stuck in details. You know, they chanting one million rounds, 64 rounds, 20, 100 rounds, and they talk about the gopis, and the, you know, they discuss, discuss about the um, Guru Tattva, who is the Guru, Shmitik, Vitvik, Ritvik, all these things going on like croaking frogs for thousands of years without any benefit. But um, um, this basic understanding is missing. You know, Krishna consciousness is not to fulfill our material desires. It is not that I take up Krishna consciousness to, to become a very famous reformer and a politician and a freedom fighter and the deprogrammer and whoever, you know, whatever nonsense. No, Krishna consciousness is meant so, you know, you can, by taking up Krishna, you can become yourself. You can become your true self, eternal self. Devotee of Krishna, pure devotee of Krishna. Then we also spoke about the beginning, how to begin Krishna. There was another podcast like that, beginning, how to begin Krishna consciousness. There's this girl, very traumatized girl. We have hired, I've mentioned, we have hired this girl especially from Taiwan. We paid her $2,000 to do this special photograph with her palms in the face. How to begin Krishna Consciousness. So there I spoke about the the importance of chanting. Chant Hare Krishna. Even if you don't have beats, that's okay. Don't don't stress out. Oh, I have no beats. So I have to, you know, give up Krishna Consciousness. No. You chant beats or no beats. You can get the beats. That's okay. That's fine. (coughs) I have my beats here. I chant on my beats every day. I've been accustomed. But if you don't have beats, it doesn't mean that you cannot chant Hare Krishna. You can chant Hare Krishna on the bus while you're going from work. You can chant Hare Krishna while waiting in a line in a store. Uh, Nobody has to hear you. You You chant silently. That's okay. You just chant for yourself. Or if you're a musician, then you have a great advantage. Because musicians and singers, they you know they play music. So if you sing Hare Krishna, nobody will even notice if you're afraid of being criticized. This is the major problem. That we're afraid to be criticized by the others. This is the greatest obstacle in our Krishna consciousness. That there's a pressure. Our society has been trained up how not to be God conscious. It is considered to be. Everybody thinks that, oh, this God conscious is some kind of a silly thing. And if they take up some religion, or, you know, some God conscious practice, this is some kind of a fanaticism. And only in my group, we're the chosen ones, and everybody else is a demon. 
you see so you have two groups complete atheists who are sick of these fanatics and then you have fanatics who have no understanding that God is the supreme lovable object for everyone even an atheist even an atheist would melt out of ecstasy if he saw Krishna face to face he would forget all his atheistic viewpoints because Krishna is the reservoir of all pleasure and that is the universal principle of all living entities they're always seeking pleasure so we know that they always seek Krishna because Krishna is the reservoir of all pleasure but they think that oh we're looking for some some sort of pleasure some we don't know what it is actually even sex life that is considered to be the highest material pleasure even people don't know why they engage in sex life it takes you know five minutes four seconds five seconds this sex pleasure and then it's over uh, and people are s basing their whole life on this sex pleasure they get married they have families they try to impress the woman woman is trying to you know get a plastic surgery fake breasts and so many things just to attract the man the whole world is governed by the sex drive but people don't even know why why they're so much attracted to the sex pleasure so we know the science of real enjoyment with Krishna so today we're gonna discuss <coughs> a very important topic for all the people who are thinking of practicing Krishna consciousness or who are, who, are who are beginning to practice Krishna consciousness or who are inquiring about Krishna consciousness and uh, we're going to talk about this there's a book called Shri Upade Shamita Srila Prabhupada translated as Nectar of Instruction is written by Srila Rupa Goswami who is the um, head disciple of Lord Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu who is Krishna himself who comes in this beautiful form of a sannyasi in the uh, uh, 15th or 16th century <coughs> and uh, in this book Srila Rupa Goswami he gives a list of items or activities that are um, considered to be an obstacle in our practice of Krishna consciousness so one of them is Jana Sangha bad association and I remember when I was reading this for the first time when I was getting you know introduced to Krishna consciousness by reading I'm still getting introduced please don't misunderstand I'm still a very neophyte but um, there was an instance when I read this for the first time and I became a little alarmed because it sound sounded a little bit to me it sounded a little bit strange that you should avoid associating with people who are not Krishna conscious right everyone is afraid of this cult mentality oh I'm gonna become a victim of a cult and then I'm gonna cut off from everyone else I'm gonna be isolated and nobody everybody will reject me and then I will have to be dependent on the cult and then the cult will dictate what I'm supposed to do and oh right nobody wants that this is horrible uh, the problem is that we don't understand that we're already in that cult that cult is called materialistic society godless society is a big cult and it's not a small little cult it's a big cult it's a, one of the greatest cults but when you compare it to the spiritual world the population of the spiritual world it is insignificant right so from Krishna's point of view this is a cult tiny little cult I gave a class you can see it on the uh, expand the bliss channel our YouTube channel if you scroll down if you do a little search uh, this materialistic society is a tiny little cult in the animated spiritual sky this is the name of that class you can listen to it if you want so um, I remember and I became a little alarmed when I read this from Srila Prabhupada and from Srila Bhagavad that no, now I have to cut off from people. There's another point that uh, the impersonalistic philosophy is very prominent nowadays. 
and the tendency of the impersonalist is to make everyone God and this might not appear um, uh, right away you might not actually get this understanding right away <coughs> in the beginning it appears as some kind of a uh, liberal mindedness that we should treat everyone equally we should be respectful to everyone and we should get to know other cultures and exchange ideas not be close-minded right so I was uh, uh, very much influenced but as everyone is today it's not that I was unique everyone is influenced by this impersonal philosophy and although we trying you know we pose as very liberal minded that actually everyone is very close minded and while people some people are starving and they have no drinking water uh, the other you know class of people on the other side of the earth are throwing food in the in the ocean because they're so fat they can't digest anymore so they throw it in the garbage in the sea oh let's destroy this because it's not good for the market right so it's a age of hypocrisy there's no such a thing as treating everyone equally that is possible uh, on the spiritual platform but on the material platform uh, everyone is thinking like an animal how to eat how to sleep how to get a nice mate and how to fight with those who are threatening these material activities and this philosophy of oh, accepting everyone equally and so on so is just a nice ploy or nice sentiment uh, but actually nobody is really practicing such principles in our Krishna consciousness we're uh, practicing this we treat everyone equally because we understand uh, what actually spirit soul is or who we are we are all parts and parcels of Krishna so because we love Krishna we love all his parts and parcels even ants a Vaishnava a devotee of Krishna doesn't kill even an ant because he understands I cannot create life why should I kill why should I take life Krishna has created this is part of Krishna this ant is part of Krishna I have no right to kill him you know and we see the so-called impersonalists they advise people to eat chicken oh it's all God anyway so God I am God chicken is God so God eats God then Prabhupada makes a joke he says well he says like that the chicken God I am God so God is eating another God what's the problem but he will not agree to be eaten by tiger God that he will not agree <laughs> That's where his Mayavadi philosophy fails. So, <clears throat> uh, we're going to take a little break. Been a lot of talking. I'm sorry. I got carried away. 28 minutes already gone. I hope you're still there. You didn't fall asleep. Maybe some of you have fallen asleep. But um, there's a nice band that's going to come now to wake you up. That's right. You've been all waiting for this band to come on our podcast. They've been recording here with me in this apartment. Lately, they've been using a lot of orchestra with them. So, um, um, and they, they have a nice song connected to this um, podcast about bad association. So, uh, let's give it up for the Bliss Band and their new song. Uh, watch out for the people. Enjoy.
From you everything emanates Beautiful one You're the cause of all causes Beautiful one Will I see your face again? And we're back, Hare Krishna. That was the Bliss Band with their song, Watch Out for the People. <clears throat> <coughs> All these songs <clears throat> are from the upcoming Hare Krishna musical. Stay tuned. We're going to release a musical soon. 
there's gonna be uh lots of singing and also there's a uh, acting and Krishna knows what so now uh, I have some quotes here uh, or do I um, well there are certain passages that I would like to mention uh, mention um, okay uh, I couldn't find this conversation so fast but you can find it also on the database maybe someone can volunteer and find this it's a very interesting point or instruction interesting tip Srila Prabhupada is giving the point is that um, now it's kind of difficult most of us uh, are we do not have access to uh, devotee association that's why we're meeting here on the internet in this way we associate but uh, it is not like when Srila Prabhupada was here that there were temples all, all around the world filled up with hundreds of devotees and you could associate and advance very fast so uh, um, it's kind of difficult because even Srila Prabhupada says a man is a social animal we're very social we like to associate we can't just be alone sitting somewhere and doing nothing you know or even chanting Hare Krishna you get tired of this you want to exchange you want to serve right it's not that much of a that you uh, want to be served but um, we want to serve others this is the natural calling of the soul we want to serve others we want to give them prasadam speak you know encourage them speak some nice words you know it makes is it's a pleasure for us to give service to others so um um what we could do now even there might not be so many devotees that we could associate with we might be surrounded by people who are not exactly krishna conscious or even inimical towards krishna consciousness um what we could do is um we can preach to them and create devotees they're not devotees okay let's create devotees this is my suggestion and this is what I applied in my personal life also mm, I was also uh, alone in the beginning I was just practicing alone I was in school I was working also um, and of course I also I had some good association of devotees who taught me but um, at one point I was alone again and instead of being instead of uh, lamenting and giving up Krishna consciousness I decided I'm gonna create my association you see just like this um, President Kennedy right he said that don't ask what America can do for you ask what you can do for America <laughs> So we can apply the same principle. Don't ask what you can, what Krishna can do for you. If you are complaining, oh Krishna, you didn't give me proper association. Oh, this, uh, the whole world is nonsense. It's all Maya. Oh, let me just go to Maya. Let me smoke ganja and that's it. No. You ask what you can do for Krishna. Krishna wants this message to be spread all around the world. So... Uh, let's try to spread this Krishna consciousness uh, I'm very happy our friend Harley um, David ha David Heiser from the US uh, he always shares me with me his um, preaching uh, adventures not adventures exactly he does, he's not so elaborate he doesn't elaborate so much but he always mentions that he's been sharing Krishna consciousness with his friends so um it doesn't require much knowledge you don't have to be a great Bhaktivedanta that you are a great scholar and quote shlokas and you know you read Prabhupada's books one million times no whatever you have heard whatever you have assimilated whatever you, you understand you pass it on to others and Krishna will appreciate this so much this is a actually a trick Prabhupada even says 
that um, if you uh, get the mercy of the spiritual master, uh, it become becomes more easier to follow the regulative principles. So how to acquire the mercy of the spiritual master? By uh, fulfilling his desire. And what is the desire of the spiritual master? What is the desire of Srila Prabhupada? That we take up Krishna consciousness and the others take up Krishna consciousness. That is his desire. He doesn't want anything for himself. He's not like an ordinary man that I want money, I want woman, I want all these things. Then he's not a spiritual man. Then he's a cheater, rascal. His desire is to simply please Krishna. So pleasing the spiritual master means pleasing Krishna. And Krishna also, he doesn't want anything. He is complete. He's perfect. But he wants that you also become ecstatic and uh, eternal. You're already eternal, but you have forgotten. So Krishna wants you to remember this. Revive your original nature so if we assist him if we assist krishna in this endeavor then krishna becomes very much pleased and he blesses you with spiritual advancement that is why this preaching work is essential it is not that it is simply for some monks or for some priests or for some gurus lord chaitanya says that everyone should become a guru so um my suggestion, my humble advice is that although we might not have devotee associations so frequently, let us create. Everyone actually is a devotee of Krishna. Believe it or not, this is our sanatana dharma, our eternal consciousness, I said before. So, um, everyone deeply inside is Krishna conscious. They're just various gradations of forgetfulness. That's all. So, we don't see the world as, oh, these are devotees and non-devotees. For practical purposes, we make such a distinction, yes. But ultimately, from the spiritual platform, there is no such a thing as a non-devotee. So, if you keep this in mind, and you humbly uh, explain this Krishna consciousness to your friends, to your family members, to people you meet, to people who are interested, uh, you scientifically explain to them, not dogmatically not that you have to you have to practice and otherwise you go to hell which is true by the way <laughs> but um, people are not gonna listen to this kind of preaching <coughs> we must scientifically scientifically explain Krishna explains to Arjuna scientifically Arjuna is not blindly following Krishna he's asking so many questions if you read the Bhagavad Gita Arjuna is asking so many questions he's challenging Krishna but Krishna you said that we're not this body, so then why are you forcing me to fight, which is a bodily activity? You know, I'm just paraphrasing. Uh, then he's asked, oh, you said that Vivashvan instructed, you have instructed this Bhagavad Gita to Vivashvan some two millions years ago. But Vivashvan is senior by birth to you. You appeared only recently. How is that? No, so he's asking him very intelligent questions. And Krishna explains uh, such answers he gives that it satisfies your intelligence. This is what we need to do. We have to satisfy people's intelligence, not their fanatic, fanatical uh, desires. Uh, sometimes we preaching with this nonsense idea that, oh, let me cheat this person. Let me tell him some nonsense just so he can accept my religion. Krishna Kanchi is not a religion like that. People must on their own understand scientifically why this is beneficial. And they must practice sincerely Krishna Kanchi for their own self-purification. So coming back to that quote I was mentioning, the quote I couldn't find. Prabhupada, they're asking Prabhupada, um, if we preach to people, is that association with non-devotees? And Prabhupada says, no. This is giving. You're giving them your association this is good it is not that we should simply cut off from people and not talk to them no talk to them and tell them about krishna give them something see we're all taking advantage of each other no? the, you might say the, they're non-devotees but they're building the roads they're supplying the food stuff they're working and we're taking advantage so we should give them something back and instead of giving them back something material like money for example 
Let's give them something that will liberate them from material existence. This is the real gift you can give to people. So the devotee is asking them, Prabhupada, how do we know the difference? What is the difference? Am I associating with non-devotees? Why are we associating with non-devotees also? Because um, in a non-devotee association, there's more sense gratification. See, If I'm not strong enough, if I'm not strong enough to get out of this material world, get ready for death after I leave this body, I should get ready for that moment. If I'm not serious, if I'm still thinking, ah, it's okay, it's all right, when it happens, it happens. If I, if I have this sort of mentality, then I will seek this non-devotee association for that purpose. So I can forget the real meaning of life. This is what you um, experience. When you associate n with non-devotees, you develop non-devotional or materialistic uh, desires and focus like that. So the devotee is asking Prabhupada, that what, how do we know the difference? See, this is very important. Always, you must check yourself. Krishna consciousness is not some kind of a, that you have a manual in a book, and if you simply follow the rules, everything is going to, it is like that also. But on the other hand, it is um, internalized. Everyone must realize himself. So you must always check yourself. Am I following this Krishna? Am I sincerely doing this? Am I chanting these rounds sincerely or am I doing it just like a me mechanical robot just to get it done and over with? Uh, am I preaching to these people because I really want to benefit them or just because I want to be praised? Oh, you so learned. Oh, you are so intelligent. Sometimes people praise like that. Uh, they have never heard such philosophy, so they praise you. But we should not do for that purpose. We should do for the purpose of the people take up this Krishna consciousness themselves. So Srila Prabhupada answers, he says that if you are uh, taking up their habits, uh, you preaching, preaching, but at the same time you're giving up your principles, you're giving up your chanting, you're giving up talking about Krishna like that, then it is non-devotee association. But if the people who you preach to, who you're explaining to, who you're sharing with, they're taking up the Krishna conscious practice. Uh, they're giving up, let's say, they're giving up sinful activities. They're chanting Hare Krishna. They're offering their food stuff. They associate with devotees, hearing from Srila Prabhupada. Then that is effective preaching. See, so we have to know how to preach. Everyone wants to preach something. Everyone is a preacher. Everyone wants to share. That's okay. Just like on Facebook, right? There's a share button. Don't forget to <laughs> share this podcast, by the way. Um, but we have to know how to preach Krishna consciousness. This is very important. It is not simply doing that I'm doing, doing. There must be some effect. So the effect is that you're going down, you're forgetting Krishna, and you're thinking, well, they're, they're accepting Krishna consciousness. They're not inim inimical. Some of my other friends, they laugh, but these people are not laughing. They say, oh, it's nice. But I'm smoking ganja with them, or I'm engaging in some other mundane activities with them. Instead of cultivating my Krishna consciousness, then it is not preaching. That is a failure. That sort of preaching is a fall down. That's why for a neophyte devotee, this preaching um, is not so much emphasized. Of course, as I said before that we should preach to him. But don't take more than you can handle. Just take only those people who are uh, seriously interested. And those who are not, try to avoid them. Narutam Das Thakur says that um, instead of Worshipping Radha and Krishna have been drinking poison by associating with non-devotees. He compares it to drinking poison. Srila Rupa Goswami in Nectar of Devotion says that being with non-devotees is just like being in a cage surrounded by fire. And in that cage you are with wild animals like lions and tigers. <laughs> this is a very strong analogy. But 
we have to keep in mind that even in mundane sphere, let's say someone is very serious, he's a student at Harvard University. So if he wants to succeed in his studies, and he must hang out with the students who are advanced. He must consult with the professors. He must associate. If he goes there and he doesn't, he's not, doesn't have any interest, then he will fail. He will not be able to uh, pass his exams. Right? Similarly, Prabhupada gives this example of a businessman. A businessman, he goes to the stock market, stocks, stock exchange, something like that. And there are other businessmen who are also doing business, so there's a higher chance that um, he's going to make some good business. Right? He's going to make some good business because there's more opportunity. So similarly, if we associate with devotees, they will give us some hints, some realizations that we might not uh, develop on our own. So we should always be ready to associate with the devotees. The devotees are always discussing Krishna consciousness, not politics. What this guru has done and this person is bogus. And uh, these are not devotees. They might be devotees, but not very high class devotees. They have missed the point. They are wasting their time uh, in the name of Krishna consciousness, they, they engaging in the same mundane activity of criticizing, fault-finding, uh, picking out uh, peanuts from the stool, <laughs> although they're, n they're rotten. <laughs> so um, this is not a good association. The good association, they're discussing Srimad Bhagavatam, Bhagavad Gita. They're discussing Krishna. When John Lennon asked Srila Prabhupada, how do we know? Which of the commentaries on the Bhagavad Gita is bona fide? Which of these gurus is bona fide? Srila Prabhupada said, the criterion of the guru, of the good association, is that whoever is the most addicted to Krishna. So if someone is speaking of this and that and so many topics, but no Krishna, just like we see some famous swamis now, so-called swamis, <coughs> they're supposed to be from our Sampradaya. But in their speech, we don't find a single word of Krishna. Right? I don't know exactly why that is so. Maybe there's some preaching method, some secret preaching technique. But if there's no Krishna, then what is the point of that preaching? Uh, simply the word Krishna. If you simply say Krishna, that's all. There's the uh, beneficial effect, right? Just like the other day I met some people here on the street. So they say hello. They see a, a monk, so they feel friendly, I guess. I don't know why they say hello. I am not so beautiful. <laughs> so I say Hare Krishna. I take the opportunity. Although I could say hello, but I say Hare Krishna. Immediately give them the holy name. So let's say you're stuck in the elevator with your neighbor, with a fat neighbor <laughs> who just came back from McDonald's and you're staring at his face. Instead of meditating, oh, what is this nonsense? Meat eater, pig, pig-like person. You can look in straight into his eyes and say, Krishna! And immediately he's benefited. He might think that you're crazy. But the effect is there. The purifying effect is there. Even in Chaitanya Charitamrita, uh, Lord Chaitanya, I believe it is Lord Chaitanya. I hope I'm not confusing with some other personality. He says that even if these words, Krishna, if these syllables are disconnected, in other words, if someone says the syllable Krish at the beginning of his speech, and the syllable na at the end of the speech. In other words, if some other word contains these syllables, krish, na, and they're mixed together with some other words, even that is taken as the holy nam or the holy name. This is amazing. Amazing benediction for the age of Kali. So, um, 
Uh, today we've been discussing about bad association. If you have some experiences with bad association or you want to know more how to avoid bad association or you want to know what is bad association or you want to find out how to preach better so you can create your own association of devotees or you want to get in touch with the devotee association, you want to associate with the devotees. Devotees from Bliss are always ready to correspond with you, talk about Krishna, answer your questions, please drop us a comment here on YouTube or um, drop us an email. Go on the website, expandthebliss.com. If you like our podcast, don't forget to uh, give a donation. We very much appreciate donations. Lately, we had a, a new Patreon. Jai Hare Krishna. Uh, a nice uh, girl, Leslie. Uh, from Holland, she has become our uh, supporter. This Patreon system is very nice. You can give a very small amount of your uh, money and you give on a regular basis. It helps us tremendously. And it's not free. You also get rewards. So if you are still not our Patreon member, please become one today. All the information is on the Expand the Bliss Dot com and also in the links in the descriptions you can see on YouTube here. So if you feel generous, uh, support our Bliss mission. We're preaching Krishna consciousness in different countries. We're developing content. We're trying to enlighten people about the importance of human form of life and the importance of God consciousness in our world. It is the most important service that we can do in this world. It cannot be um, uh, estimated financially. But if you feel a little generous today, please give a little, at least a little something so we can go on with our activities. It was a pleasure uh, today. Um, and I'll see you next time or talk to you next time. My name is Purajit Das. Thank you very much. Hare Krishna. See you later. Haribur.